Black shaming does exist. From the Oak Wall Studios in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello, this is Jesse Oakley III, and today's topic, I'm going to cover it. It is called Black Shaming. This is just going to be a start of a discussion, and hopefully some people can learn a thing or two about it. But what and how this topic came to be? Well, I have a couple of routes that I want to share with you. First and foremost, if you're on YouTube and you've seen the clip of Carlton being rejected in a fraternity because he wasn't black enough and he was a Bell Ells sellout, then you probably know where I'm going with this. But for me, I happened to be at a front office at my day job and we were talking, we were doing the discussions and I said something that was shocking for the other people who weren't of my skin complexion. I said, you know what? I'm originally from Virginia. I'm from the South. And yes, I've been called a cute little colored boy when I was a little kid. But the most destructive prejudice that I could ever see was being here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Some people call Las Vegas the Mississippi of the West. But in this case, when I deal with prejudice here in Las Vegas, it wasn't from someone of a lighter skin complexion. It was from someone from the same skin complexion or a little bit darker than I was. What do I mean by this? When I started off in sixth grade, I was positive. I was the person that sort of spoke in a certain way that other people in the neighborhood did not speak. And man, did I get teased, did I get harassed, and I get harangued for that because I wasn't a part of their system. I was a part of their structure. Now let's go backwards even further. When I was growing up as a young kid, I grew up in a military family. I dealt with different cultures from different children all over the United States, whether it be Virginia, Texas, Washington State. And I got along with different kids from different parts of background. I thought it was cool until I moved to Las Vegas, Nevada, until I got into the sixth grade center. Then I noticed that I was in the environment that I was usually in. The way I spoke, the way I carried myself, oh my goodness, I got picked on beyond means. And it's gotten to the point where it carried from sixth grade center to junior high school. And when I got to junior high school, there's some cool people there, but overall, the teasing, the harassing got a lot worse. And you think the authorities in schools did anything about it? Not too much. But I'm here to let you know that when I got to high school, I noticed some of that has died off. And I was in a different multicultural area when I got to high school. That was more multicultural than the ones I've been to in Sixth Grade Center and Junior High School. The point is black shaming. The end of that clip for the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Uncle Phil hit home with a certain message. When are we going to stop doing this ourselves to each other? This is from a person who became a lawyer, a judge, and who got the successes that he can through hard work and through effort and through the best job that he can. But according to some folks in the community and the culture, that's a penalty, that's selling out, that's Uncle Tommy. That's doing what you can not to fit the narrative of a certain culture. You do not see this in certain social medias. You do not see this with certain news medias because I have a feeling that the news medias would like to promote the different stereotypes that are out there. Okay, black people act like this, black people act like that, where it's far beyond the truth. Yes, you may have some black people that want to air certain grievances here and there, but I'm here to let you know that black shaming does exist. If you are a person that is wants to do the best for yourself, it doesn't matter if you're black, if it doesn't matter if you're white, if it doesn't matter if you're brown or anything else, go ahead and do the best job you can with what you got. And do not pay any attention to the haters out there. They are haters for a reason. And these haters will try to cut you down, will try to belittle your accomplishments, will try to do everything they possibly can, whether it's mentally or physically, to try and bring you down. 
don't be surprised if you see that happening. You know what? I got an A plus. Who cares? Do you think you're better than us? You know, I got a master's degree in engineering. Well, who the hell do you think you are? This happens many times and it's been happening for many decades. I saw it in the 80s, I saw it in the 90s, I saw it in the double zeros, I saw it in the tens, and now I'm seeing it right now in the 20s. Plenty of decades of this going on. And do you think that certain people outside the, the black community are hip to this? From the shockless on my faces from the front office, I say they were shocked about what's going on because they never lived to this type of stuff. I have. Now, for people that do black shaming, there are different types of black shamings that's out there. There's the black shaming where it's a mouth type of thing where they try to put you down with their words about how much of accomplishment that you have done. That's one level of black shaming. Another level of black shaming is them doing some physical violence to you, some, something that's quite physical. They try to push you down, shove you down, kick you down, or threaten you here. You better not get ahead of us or else. That has happened too. And there's also the type of black shaming where you would get other people that are like them and then they will come at you full circle, full front, and also hurling your names like Sellout, Coon, Uncle Tom, Oreo, Coconut, or anything else. That has happened. If you are on the wrong end of the black shaming tactics, all I gotta tell you is keep going, keep doing the best that you possibly can. And if you're able to do that, then you know in the long run, you'll be better off than those haters and those black shamers that are already out there. Look at it this way. Why are they doing this black shaming tactics? Why are they doing this technique? I bet you that somehow the people that do the hating they're not all where they are right now. They also make the moves and the choices in life that didn't benefit them. Some of them came from different environments that was extremely negative. And you have others that are just plain angry, plain mean and plain wrong. For those people, all you could do is just shake your head and take pity on them. But for yourself, the best thing you can do is step forward, keep moving forward, and do the best damn job you can. Yes, you'll have haters, and yes, they do come in all colors, but the ones that hurt the most are the ones that look like you, that look like me. You say that there's some type of progression going on, like we need to support each other, but how can we support each other if we keep shooting ourselves in the foot? Answer that question. I just cracked the surface on black shaming and what it's all about and where it comes from and everything else. But don't be surprised if you see any more videos in the future. But I hope that people that are watching this could learn a thing or two about it. And if they do, then that's only the beginning. This is Jess Oakley III speaking. Until next time, you take care and have a great day. Bye.